In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at a new product from Microsoft, and it's called Office Mix. Now, this is a pretty exciting new feature that Microsoft is making available to people who use PowerPoint. Now, just so you know, before we get started, right now, Office Mix is for Windows users only. So those of you that have a Mac computer, you're going to have to find a Windows computer in order to really try this. But here I am on mix.office.com, and all you need to do to get started using this pretty exciting product is click Get Office Mix. When you click that, it's going to check to make sure that you're on a Windows computer, and then it's also going to download the Office Mix setup. Now, I am in Google Chrome um, as I do this, and so that's why it shows up here in the lower left. If you're using one of the other browsers, it may not do that. It might just download to your Downloads folder. It gives me some instructions here. It says, close PowerPoint before you install. Your download should start automatically. It did, and it finished downloading. Look for the downloaded installer file and run it to complete install. Now if the download doesn't start for you, notice that there is a link there that you can click to download the setup file. For me it did work. I'll just click the setup. There's a license agreement that I have to read through and agree to, and then I click install. And it begins the process of installing Office Mix. And remember, this is an add-on to PowerPoint, to your existing Microsoft Office PowerPoint program. And so for this, you really need to already have Office, especially PowerPoint. All right, so I have finished the installation process, and now it says, welcome to Office Mix. It gives me a screen here with some steps to take to get started. Now the videos that come with Office Mix are good. I would encourage you to watch those if you need to, but I'm just gonna go forward and start showing you some of the things you can do with Office Mix. Okay, so we're ready to start using Office Mix. Notice the first thing that it says to do is to delete this slide. So I'm just gonna go right click on the slide and click delete. Next, it says click to add first slide. So I just click and slide number one is created for me here in the upper left. Now at this point, so far, it looks pretty much just like any other typical PowerPoint presentation. I'm gonna click to add title and I can just type out the title I want for my presentation. I can click to add subtitle and go from there. Of course, I can also go up and click design to add a design for my presentation. And so far, like I say, none of this is different. This is typical of PowerPoint. But what is new and different is because I installed the Office Mix add-on, notice that there's an additional tab here at the top. And if you click on that tab, it gives you a whole suite of tools that you can use in creating your presentations. I'm going to right click here to create a new slide. And on this slide, let's say I would like to include a video from YouTube. Now, before Office Mix came around, you could do this. You could put in a link to a YouTube video, and there were some other ways that you could get YouTube content into a PowerPoint presentation, but it's just so much easier and nicer if you have Office Mix installed. So I'm going to click here where it says click to add title, and I'll title this Intro Video. And I would like a video to be here that will introduce the topic of noun gender in Spanish. Now, to do this, all I need to do is click on Screen Recording. Notice what it did, it minimized PowerPoint, and now I can select the area that I want to record. Now I really should have gone to YouTube first, so give me just a second, I'm going to go back and I'm going to now switch over to the browser and go to youtube.com and I'll find my video. Let's say this is the one I want to use, I'll just go ahead and click on its name. It brings up the video. Now that I know the size of the video, I can go back into PowerPoint and I can click Screen Recording and click and drag around what I want to record and then notice up at the top I have some controls. Now when I click record these controls are going to disappear and that's a little difficult at first but I'll show you how to get them back. But I'm ready now to record this video from YouTube. I'm just going to take a small portion of it so I'll just click record. I get a countdown three two one. I can press play and after this intro it gets into the content that I want to capture. I'm going to skip ahead to that part. I'm going to pause that and now I'm ready to stop the screen recording or the screen capture. Now notice there are some options. You can change the audio on or off and also you can record the pointer, the mouse pointer, or not. 
But when you're ready to stop it, you just put your mouse up at the top, press stop, and look what it's done. It's captured for me a very small portion of that video and it put it into my PowerPoint. And this is what Office Mix does for you. It makes it so that you can mix the internet with your presentation. You can mix your voice with your presentation. All sorts of different content you can put in to your own PowerPoint presentations using Office Mix. Let's look at a couple other things you can do with Office Mix. I'm going to click New Slide and again I need to click on the Mix tab. In addition to doing screen recordings, you can also do screenshots. So it lets you pick from available windows. And as you can see, I have one available window right now, and it's just a black screen. But let's say there's a newspaper article that you would like to capture and include in your presentation, at least the headline and some of the words at the beginning of the article. This is a very handy tool. You can just go down and click Screen Clipping and it takes you to your web browser and you have these crosshairs that you can just click and drag to capture the story or the headline or whatever it is on the internet that you want to include in your presentation and then just let go of the mouse button and look that easily and smoothly you now have the article clipped and it's right there in your slide moving right along let's take a look at another option that you have in office mix you can very easily insert a video from your computer now this was possible before office mix but it just makes it that much easier to just quickly select and pull in the video that you want to use you can do the same with audio pulling in audio clips from your computer and putting them into your presentation. But now let's move over to the first option we have here at the far left when you click on the Office Mix tab, and that is the slide recording option. And this is really quite powerful in my opinion. Notice what it says, record audio, video, and digital ink. You can record audio and video of yourself giving your presentation right on your slides just like you would on a whiteboard. And so this is great for teaching over the internet. It's great for making presentations where you narrate your content. The students will be able to hear your voice. They will be able to see the things that you do on the slide, whether it be moving your mouse or whether it be drawing something, annotating the slide. They will be able to see that and hear your voice. It's just a wonderful option for people who use PowerPoint a lot in presentations, at work, or in a school setting. So to show this, I need to click on slide recording. But before I do that, I'm going to go back to my top first slide. I'll click on it and now in Office Mix I'm going to click on slide recording and I'll show you how you can create these narrated slideshows. Now at this point notice I'm on my first slide and I can click this record button to begin recording my voice and some other things as well. Before I do this just an explanation you need to think about when you're going to stop your recording. If you start the recording on this slide but then advance to the next slide and then stop the recording your recording is most likely going to be put on this second slide. So think about when are you going to start your recording and when are you going to stop it. And when you stop it, that's where the recording typically is stored. Another thing to consider is your audio and video. Notice right now it's not going to be recording my face and I am absolutely fine with that. But if I wanted to, I could click and switch cameras so that you could see my face as well as hear my voice. You can also change the microphone that it's recording from and the level of the microphone. And then it also has some inking options. We'll look at those in just a minute. Okay, so I am ready to begin. I'm just going to start the recording here on this slide and I'm going to end it on this slide. Ready? I click record. Hi, we are about to learn about noun gender in Spanish. Did you know that everything in Spanish, every person, place, or thing, every object in the world is either male or female? Yeah, it's true. And we're going to learn how to tell whether a car is masculine or feminine, whether a shirt is masculine or feminine, or a paper is masculine or feminine. So stay tuned to this presentation. Okay, I clicked stop because I was done with that recording. Now, if I want to, I can preview how it went just by clicking this preview slide button. Now, because I stopped the recording on this slide, that's where it's going to be recorded and stored. Now I'm ready to move to my next slide. So I'll click the next arrow here to go to the next slide. You can also use these arrows here if you would like to advance and to go back. Now this slide already has video as part of the slide and so I don't want to really talk over the video. And so I'm going to continue and I'll click the next slide to move on. If I want to record on this slide I'll go ahead and do that by clicking record. Okay so let's practice what we learned about noun gender. 
In English, the word world doesn't necessarily have to be masculine or feminine, but in Spanish, it is masculine. The word for world is mundo. Mundo ends in O, so it's probably masculine, and in this case it actually is. And so, the way you would say the world in Spanish is el mundo. Okay, so just as an aside, as you're watching, notice that I'm using annotations. I'm using this pen as I'm talking. Over here on the right, I have some nice options for colors and for different styles. There's also an eraser that once you click it, it just erases everything that you've put on the screen. But we've got some really nice options here for annotating or writing on the screen as we're talking. Okay, I'm going to press stop. And now my recording is set on this slide. And I can test that out by clicking preview slide. Okay, as you can see, it worked very well. I'm just going to tap escape to get back into our screen narration area. And so, you know, as you can see, this is just a very useful feature for teachers as well as presenters of any kind. You can record and stop and have that recording stored on the slide. You can go back to previous slides, advance to next slides. You can preview the effect that you're having on it. And you can also have slide notes. If you have typed in some slide notes, you can use this so that it's almost like a teleprompter so that you're seeing the text of what you're supposed to say, but the viewer won't see those. Now there's one tool here that I skipped, and that is Edit Slide Recording. And this is very useful and important because you may need to trim a slide recording. Maybe what you recorded was a little too long, or maybe you made a mistake or two. You can use this blue playhead to advance to where you want to make your change. Click play. I should have ended the video a little sooner, so I'm just going to click and drag this slider to the point where I want to cut. And as I do that, notice what it does. It's changing the end time for my video. I'm going to click OK, and I've just trimmed that slide recording. You can also just delete the entire slide recording on this particular slide and start over. And the third option is to delete all recordings throughout your presentation. you got to be careful doing that. You have to be sure that's what you really want. Okay, so I'm happy with what I've done here. I'm going to click Close. And it's kind of hard to tell, but I now have a recording here on the first slide. I have a recording on the third slide. Okay, so let's say you're just about done. Maybe there's one more element that you would like to add to your mix before you finish. And that might be this. Quizzes. You can insert a quiz, a video, or some other Office add-ins. When you click that button, it takes you to this screen where it lists the add-ins that you have put into your Office Mix account. Right now it says I have none. So I can click Office Store. And as you can see, there are several different options you have. There's a free response quiz, true-false quiz, a math kind of question. There's um, CK12 math resources. We have multiple response poll, just all sorts of great options. I'm going to click here, multiple choice quiz. I'll click add. And so now I have the ability to insert some multiple choice questions into my office mix. So the question is going to be, is the word shirt in Spanish masculine or feminine? Okay, and notice that there are some options here for the text and you can put pictures and you can use math equation symbols. So there's some really great options there. Now, if you want, you can give the students only one chance to answer correctly or multiple choices. You can shuffle the answers. And you, if you want, you can limit the attempts that they have. So I'll go in and put, as a possible answer, I'll put masculine and I'll put feminine. And then I need to mark the correct answer. And in this case, shirt, la camisa in Spanish, is actually feminine. So I need to click the check mark to make sure that that's the option that's selected. I can also put in some feedback to explain. So I love this, that you can put in not only what's right and what's wrong, but you can put in feedback to help teach the students one more time and in one more way. All right, notice I could add another answer if I need to or want to, but I don't. So I'll just preview it. This is what it's going to look like. And I'm really happy with how that looks. So I'm done. Now, there's so much more that you can find here in Mix, Quizzes, Videos, and Apps. If you click on that, you know, do some searches in here for what else is available. But there's some amazing add-ins that you can pull into your Office Mix projects. Now, there's much more that we could talk about at this point, but I think this video will get you started. 
Uh, I'd like to finish by showing you some of the options you have when you're completely done with your Office Mix presentation. You, of course, can preview what it all looks like, but once you've done that, you should think about maybe uploading it to Office Mix. This puts it in the cloud and makes it easier to share and to access it in other locations. All right, so I clicked that button, Upload to Office Mix. So I'm just going to click Next, and after a few seconds, it wants me to sign in. I need to put in my email and password, click sign in. I need to say what I'm doing. Am I updating an existing mix or uploading a new mix? And that's what I'm doing in this case. Do I also want to enable playback on mobile devices? If I do, you have to create a video so that it can be watched on those mobile devices. So yes, I would like it to be watchable on mobile devices. Now I click next and it's uploading my office mix to the online office mix storage space but it's also processing it and exporting the presentation to video so these are some really great options and it's really amazing that microsoft is giving these away for free and they're all found here in this add-on called office mix and it just adds right into powerpoint now while that's processing and it does take some time especially if you're exporting to video let me just also quickly talk about some of these other buttons that we have here. In addition to uploading to Office Mix, you can look at other mixes that you have already uploaded by clicking this button. You could also just skip the uploading to Office Mix and export it directly to video, or you could publish to Office 365 video. So we do have some other options if you don't want to upload your presentations, your Office Mix presentations, to the Office Mix online storage. As you can see, I'm now at 100% exported, 100% uploaded, and now it's just processing the video, finishing it off. While that's finishing, let me just mention that if you ever get confused or lost, or if you want to learn more, if you want to dig in a little deeper in what you can do with Office Mix, in addition to watching my video over and over, you should also click this to go to some tutorials, and those tutorials should help you through any difficulties that you're having with Office Mix. All right, success, I'm done. It says, your mix has been successfully uploaded, show me my mix. So I'll click that link, and it jumps out to the internet, and this is my mix, available on the internet. There's the name, I could put in a description, categories, tags. There's some options for sharing and permissions. Here's the mix itself, and if I click play, my mix begins. It gives me a link to my mix, and it gives me some other ways to share it. I can easily email it to people. I can embed it onto a website, and notice it says I'm going to have to change some options here if I want to embed to a web page. And so for both of these options, embed and share, I'm going to have to go up here and change the permissions. Instead of private or limited, it needs to be unlisted or public. So I'll just leave it here at unlisted. Once you click save, you can then click on embed again, and it gives you the embed code for small, medium, and large, and then you would just copy that and paste it into your own LMS whether it be canvas or blackboard or if you're not using an LMS you can just paste it into your website like blogger or Weebly whatever it might be you should be able to embed this office mix presentation right into your site now with these permissions set to be either unlisted or public you now can also go and click share and it gives you an easy way to share it to Facebook, Google+, Twitter, and so forth. So this is a pretty smooth, nice tool that Microsoft has produced, and it's available for free, mostly for Windows computers, but hopefully in the future it'll be available on other platforms as well. If you want to check out more Office mixes that have already been made, up here at the top you can go to Gallery, and you can see there's all sorts of Office mixes that other people have made and uploaded to share and you can look at those and see what you can do with them. So I have been very impressed with Office Mix, and in my opinion, it, along with Office Sway, they represent some of the things that the new Microsoft is doing. I feel like Microsoft is doing a great job lately of reaching out to educators, to education in general, and providing excellent tools for free, and tools that are really beautiful and produce great content. I hope that you'll check out Office Mix, and if you haven't already seen my Office Sway video tutorial, please check it out. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students.